Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Straightforward Farming Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Reed, alongside Nick McCormick, coming to you on a cold, kind of a rainy night here. What is it, March 21st? 6th, I think. 6th, yeah. Yeah, I'm off yeah. a week, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So what's new in your world? Anything? Anything good? No, nothing too exciting. Just trying to get ready for spring. Apparently, some people already are. There's been a lot of ground work. I know you guys worked some. Yep, got all the corn stalks worked and yeah. ready to, I think we're going to. Maybe try to plant some possibly later on this week. Maybe. I don't know. Have yeah. to see what happens here. Got a new to us second planter. So make sure that's going to run. Yeah. See what happens there and go from there, I guess. Looks like the forecast is going to hold a little better. You know, we're still not getting hot, but I mean, we're going to be up in the 60s and 70s now, 50s of a night. So yeah. might be getting. I did see one night coming up not too far off, though. It was going to be down to 31. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. watch the forecast this evening, so yeah, I'll be done. I think, unless they've changed it. Yep. But. yep. Yeah. I don't know. I've had a few people tell me that April's going to be a wet month. I've lost track of the fog days, haven't been keeping track of them this year. but So I don't know if that's what they're going by or what, but they say April could be potentially wet. But Well, it's pretty dry out there now. I say it's going to have to get with here. it. I had seven tenths of rain last night. I mean, yeah. soaked her all up. I mean, it was damn yeah. dry. So Yeah, you wouldn't really – didn't really look like we got much, you know, by – end of the day today so. yeah and i'm not going down this doom and gloom trail that you know we're already worse than 2012 and this whole year is going to be a train wreck i'm not going there but we are damn dry i mean we have been dry, for yeah. since last summer i mean yeah i don't know it uh sorry i gotta adjust my microphone here a little bit second on me yeah i i don't know you can't put ahead on that stuff like no. you never know you know nope but it shut off, what, last May or June, as yeah. far as consistent rains. I mean, we still got some here and there. But we didn't get a rain over an inch until probably December. Probably, yeah. The yeah. fall drug on and on. I mean, yes. if you didn't get it done last fall, that was your own fault. I mean, it was yeah. from cleaning fence rows to laying tile, just anything yeah. you wanted, as late as you wanted. Yeah, it was fall forever. Yeah, and it's it's actually been that way this spring. It's still, we're, they'll put rain in the forecast. They'll tell you, oh, you're going to get an inch, and we end up with two tenths. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know, but it, we don't have much subsoil moisture, I can tell you that. No, I mean, no, we don't. But, but nothing we can do about it. So. No, nope, and that can change on a dime. Two weeks from now, it may yeah. start raining and rain all the way through August. I mean, you yeah. just never, you never know. know. So don't take it wrong. I'm not painting a doom and gloom picture already out the gate that, oh, we're screwed. It's, you know, not that. So. Yeah, it'll be what it'll be. Nothing we can do about it. So Nope, nope, that's for sure. So how's the winter been going, getting projects done? And yeah, yeah, I've been, been uh, yeah, staying plenty busy there, getting... Stuff fixed up, fixed up for guys, and out the door as quick as I can. And yeah, and uh, sometimes that can be a challenge. I tell you, this this parts deal is just—is it still pretty bad? It's as bad as it's ever been. No kidding. Yeah, is yeah. it? They don't have people to pull the parts off the shelf and ship them, or they just don't have the parts, or do you know? It's. Yeah. It, I don't know for sure on that. I'm. I'm assuming mostly it's they don't have the parts, but. Yeah. It's so random. None of these companies are ever going to stock up like they had before, I don't think. No. You know, they, they managed to get rid of all that old inventory. Like, it didn't matter what you had at some point in time there. It's like, well, we'll take that because well, that's the only thing we can get. So they got they unloaded all that stuff, and they're not stocking back up to those pre-COVID levels. And it's just a struggle. And you never know what's going to bite you. You know, it's like, oh, you got three out of the four parts. Well, that's great, you know. Yeah. But that doesn't do you much good. Yeah, if you got you five know. pistons for a six hundred tractor, I mean, yeah, ain't gonna do me much good. No, <laughs> just won't do you much good. No, yeah. but I know the uh, on the flip side of that, I just noticed it yesterday going by our local John Deere dealer. I mean, they have got machinery lined up row after. I mean, they have got That's the, the most machinery I've ever seen there. Unbelievable. And granted, with Sloan's, you having twenty two yeah. stores. You know, I'm not saying that one in Wisconsin don't have any. I don't know, but I mean, it's it's a lot for our local store. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I, I don't know. Like I said, it uh, it'll be what it'll be. We work through it. Like at least now, you they can halfway give you a date, and they'll they'll come through eventually. You know, we're there for a while. Like you didn't even know, may never make it again. You know, which a lot of products did get discontinued during that time frame. But yeah, but hopefully it comes back around at at some point. Somebody goes back to work besides me and you. And yeah. and uh, I I wonder how many games are being played though because. Once again, we've talked about this in the past. I don't know of anybody who is normally in the workforce, a good, honest, hardworking American, that don't have a job. Yeah. You know, you've always got your deadbeats that have never had a job and are never going to have a job. Yeah. But why suddenly do we have this shortage? Is it truly because baby boomers have retired 
so we don't really think about that end of, or not. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the answer to that is, and I, and I don't think I don't think the drives there as much for for some people. You know, they're at work, but they're not. Yeah, maybe being as productive as as they could be or as people have been in the past and so on and so forth, you know. The, the the workforce thing has changed so much, though, too. Like, you know, how many guys did we know that when when they were our, our age now, they'd worked at the same place possibly since high school, and they may, may have worked, worked one, maybe two places their entire lives. Yeah. And loyalty was somewhat rewarded and so on and so forth. Now it seems like you about have to job hop to get to that next step or to get to that next pay level. And you know, as well as I do, like in general, a guy that's doing, been doing something for 30 years should be better at it than a guy that's been doing it for 30 days. Right. Yeah. But I don't know. So I, I think there's a lot of that too. Like those, some of those guys don't know what they don't know. They don't know the backstory to some of this stuff. Like they haven't seen this situation or, or been through this or did that. Cause they haven't been there that long. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of turnover and help. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's a messed up situation. It seemed like there for a while it thought, well, okay, this thing's going to get itself lined out, you yeah. know, but it, it just never has it. No. You know, and all those companies, or not all, but a lot of companies went remote, which I don't blame them. You know, they finally realized, hey, we don't have to have a $2 million office complex. People can get this job done realistically. And instead of being here eight hours at an office trapped here and mad, they can get their job done in four to six. And then they can still go pick their kids up, whatever. And that's great. I'm happy for them. Yeah. But, you know, it's not terribly uncommon for me to call in to some place and you can tell they're at home. Yeah. You know, which is fine. I got no problem with that. But th- that changes things a little bit, too. You know, it does. Yeah. Time they get a hold of, it's not like they can walk over to the other cubicle and be like, hey, Bob, I got this going on. You know, they got to email somebody, you know, because nobody calls anybody anymore. You got to email them, wait for a response. So you add that day in all the time. There's an extra day, extra day. Well, an extra day in February is not that big a deal. An extra day at the end of April, yeah, it's kind of a big deal. So Yeah, it's almost like we went backwards as far as speed goes. You know, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago when people were still at the office, yeah. well, you had answers and, and things flowed really nice. But like you say, now it's all it's all email here and you got to yeah. do this here. And it, it seemed like it has slowed way down the other way. Anyone always claim that email is faster and all that? Nah. I don't know. I just didn't have a conversation. I'm <laughs> but, the same way. Yeah. I just we can do the email thing, but I just didn't have the conversation. Yeah, it's, it's better than nothing, but yeah, that just don't. Yeah. Well, and there's things, there's things that you know you're in a conversation that you would remember to ask or get the details on that you that you don't put in an email or you know the connotation is taken the wrong way in an email, et cetera. I don't know. I prefer to talk on the phone. But that's me. Yeah. And I get it. I mean, it is the new generation. I mean, they don't even want to talk on the cell phone now to, hey, what are you doing tonight? It's it's no. all text. It's all, yeah. you don't use your voice at all for anything. It's no. all. Well, even down to a, even a smaller scale now, it's like, hey, did you see so-and-so Snapchat? No. Why wasn't that in our group message? Oh, yeah, we, we, yeah, he didn't put that in the text. We have a group text, the three of us, or, or the four of us, or the five of us. Why do I have to see it on his Snapchat? Why can't he just put it in the text? You know, if it was relative, if it was relevant to you and I, why do we have to have another app that essentially does the same thing that we're already doing? I, I don't understand that. But. Yeah. I wonder how many apps we're going to end up with as far as social media, you know, like your Facebook, TikTok yeah. types. Well, we'll end up, the government's going to cut them down to nothing. Yeah, you know? yeah, it sure sounds like it. Yeah, just the one they've got. Hopefully yeah. it works as good as the Postal Service. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I have a hard time believing this TikTok ban will actually go through. And I'm all for banning Chinese stuff in this country. I have no problem with that whatsoever. But of all the things to start with, like yeah. we're going to let them own land, we're going to let them take care of this, that, and the other. We'll ship factories over there, we'll do yeah. whatever. Yeah, but but TikTok, that's where we got to yeah. nip it. And don't tell me that it's a national security issue with the southern border in a complete train wreck. Yeah. At least at least come up with a better, better excuse. excuse. That's all I'm asking. Just, just t- call a spade a spade and be like, well, you guys are getting your information too fast. Yeah. That's why we got to get rid yeah. of it, because because you can get it out there too quick to millions of people instantly. Like, wait, we, we can't have that. Yeah. You know? And, of course, there's so much BS on there, too. But, like, it is intriguing, the stuff that you can find out about super quickly. It is. You know, in far-off places that you and, wouldn't know But the know funny about. part is, is Facebook is the same way. I mean, they're mining 
yeah. as much or more data and mm-hmm. Google and all these other companies in the U.S. than what TikTok ever did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I guess, and maybe this gets way deeper than I think, but it's like, just what kind of information are they supposedly stealing from me that's going to make this a national security threat? I mean, yeah. I, I don't understand that. And yeah. Maybe it goes deeper than I'm willing to think. Are but, they really getting a lot of information out of the 10 million women on there shaking this to whatever song's trendy yeah. that day? Or like, some guy trashing a four-wheeler yeah. or a cold start in a 40-20. Yeah. I mean, what? Yeah, what What big information are they getting on that? Are they like, oh, we got to stockpile 40-20s, you yeah. know? Yeah. Are we going to start them up? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's your tip for the day. The Chinese are loading up on 4020s. Yeah, probably starters for John Deere tractors. <laughs> probably. For the, yeah. for the cold start. They're probably thinking, man, we've been making these parts shitty for years, and these things still start. Yeah. I can't believe how this is working. We've, we've been trying to, to water these parts down to where they're completely unusable. <laughs> Do you think China's economy really grows as much as they – I mean, you know, it's just 10%, 10%, 10%. Oh, they had a slowdown. This year it's only 7 But it's like when you look at the exponential function of that, it's like – they should have 65 billion people in their country now. And, you know what I mean? And everybody's worth $24 billion. I mean, when you start talking 10% year over year over year, I mean. I don't know. Everything they make junk, and you got to throw it away, though. So it probably does grow. Like, when was the last time you bought something? I know you did your sprayer rant, which is kind of funny because earlier that same day, I was stretching fence. And I bought this fence stretcher at a local farm supply store. This piece of shit, the first piece of fence I go to stretch. It bends because it's a pile of shit, but it was the only one they had, so I assume it's top of the line, right? It's the only one they got. Second piece, I kind of got stretched. Third one, no, nope, it's done. It just keeps falling out of the fence. I'm like, the hell with it. I went to the shop. I made my own. Then I pulled the broke the post off because I could pull on a sword. Oh. So then I had to do, do something a little different there. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't blame the Chinese on the post, but my fence stretcher is hell for stout and has all replaceable lugs on it, so I made them out of half-inch uh, grade 8 zinc-plated U-clamps, and they don't slip out of the fence. Yeah. I'm good to go now. But, uh, you know, you think about all that stuff, how many thousands of dollars I've spent on shit over the years that I just ended up throwing away or used one time, and it's like, well, didn't work that good the first time. It's going to be completely unusable the second or third time. So you got to go buy another one, you know. Yeah. It's like estate sales, when we're 65, people are going to be like, this guy have all this Chinese junk shit for like yeah. it's not gonna be like sales when we were younger or whatever. And you go and it's, well, this guy bought this yeah big console TV. You yeah, know, and, this guy bought this ratchet boomer in yeah. 1941. Boomed down 10,000 tractors with it a year, and it's perfectly fine, still functional, as opposed to the Chinese one that I bought that you know yeah. worked twice. Yeah, yeah, and I get so sick of that. It's any store you go into, yeah. any store, it is just Chinese junk from top to bottom. Just yeah. nothing lasts at all. And you can't, there's no, not even another option. Like, I'll pay more for the better stuff. Can't even buy it. Yep. Yeah. In uh, 1980, I think it was 88, my dad bought a grasshopper lawnmower, and they were, like, unheard of yep. in 88. I don't know when they first come to the States, but, I mean, like, nobody had a grasshopper mower back yeah. then. It was a grasshopper 1212, the model number. Still got it. You've seen our yard where we yeah. grew up. Huge yard. Yeah. Mowed that yard for 20-some years, whatever it was. Long time. I don't know if it's 20 years, but a long time. Moved to town. Still got it. Yep. Never really done nothing that mower. Yeah. But now everything's just, it don't matter if it's a lawnmower, a chain yeah. boomer, whatever. You use it a few times and you throw it away. Throw it away, buy another one, which is how they keep growing their economy. And then we sell our scrap back to them. They melt it down, pour it into more useless trinket t shit for us and send it back to us. And we buy it again. Yeah. Yeah. It is frustrating. Yeah, that it is. Like some of that stuff, like, uh, you know, you're going to put this part on an old tractor, right? Let's say it's missing completely. Oh, there's this reproduction company, and they make them. And then you get it, and it's like, well, this thing's so, like, you'd be better off just be like, nah, nobody makes this. Because the one you sent me, now I'm out the 50 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever it is, and it's not much better than not having it at all. Yeah. Like, it's not usable. Yeah. You know? I hate that when you get some of them parts, and the holes are off just enough yeah. that it won't fit yeah. or something. If you're going to copy it, of course, you know they were sitting over there laughing about it probably, but yeah. if you're going to copy this shit, make it right, you know? Yeah. That's why I don't super get worried about wars with them because well, I don't think most of their shit will work. <laughs> exactly. <You know>? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Russians kind of proved that. But their stuff apparently ain't that good. They can't beat Ukraine, no. allegedly. Yep. So, yeah, I seen today, speaking of 
the uh, shipping stuff. Big ship smoked a bridge out there in Baltimore. Yeah, so you know that, that'll take years to get replaced. We'll have to do an environmental study and a whole bunch of bullshit and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. That That's a that's a weird deal. Like the first video I saw on that, I'm like, I kind of thought it was AI generated or some bullshit or whatever. So I did see one. Did the Simpsons actually predict that years ago? I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me. They did everything else. <laughs> I saw one with the you know the guy doing the news on the Simpsons, but with AI, you never know. Right. If, that if was somebody actually... if somebody made the ding video, or if that was a real portion of the, I don't watch the Simpsons, so I, I don't know. Either. You know, but yeah, it could go either way. It wouldn't surprise me if they didn't predict it. Yeah. This AI stuff's getting out of control because now you don't know. You, just you, like that, you never know. Do I believe? That the bridge was actually hit by a boat, or do I believe that the Simpsons predicted it or not? Yeah. I mean, you just don't even know which way is up or down. Yeah. yeah, up, down, back, and forth. You don't know what's going on. I feel so bad for, for the people involved in that. Like, there you were just driving to or from work, whatever, and bridge collapses. Cause, yeah, that's what I told my wife. Swear I said, I bet that just unlocked a new fear for you, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. The guy's going to be keeping an eye on the boats when you get right across the bridge. Of course, there's not like a place you can pull off and wait usually. Mm-hmm. You know, you're either on or you're off. Yeah, did they say was that bridge a mile or two? It's pretty good ways across there, I forget. Yeah, it looked pretty long to me. Yeah. I was a little perplexed that the whole thing just crumpled like that and fell in. I was, too. You know, I could see knocking a section out of it, but yeah. I mean, once it dominoed, yeah, I mean, it, was, it just yeah, it was gone. started. So, Yeah. Yeah, it's a bad deal. Absolutely. And I'm sure that's probably some major artery to get in out of a port or something. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be a... It'll be a big deal. I'm sure that'll be a reason that grain goes down. Yeah, yeah. And everything else goes up, you know. Yeah, if you stop and think about the stuff that we've actually got to see in our lifetime in the last couple of years, we had a boat wedged in the Suez Canal, yeah. <laughs> been yeah. through pandemics. Yeah. Like, we've seen all sorts of goofy shit. <laughs> of course, the boat in the Suez Canal thing made for a shitload of funny memes. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. everybody with a little bit of time on their hands had a 1066 or a Dodge Cummins or something hooked to it, trying, you know, fake pictures, obviously, trying to pull it out and square it up, and so on and so forth. But Yeah. Of course, then you always get the one or two serious guys that might have legitimate information on it, but it's like, oh, that's not funny enough. I'm scrolling past that. Yeah. I, I don't even care about the facts and the real stuff. Exactly. i, I got to move on to the guy that's making fun of it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Ain't it funny, though, how fast you get information mm-hmm. now? I mean, by 7 o'clock this morning, I knew that a boat had hit the bridge. I mean, just yeah. boom. And then yeah. once you scroll TikTok or whatever, or Facebook, any of it, I mean, there's just 9,000 people that have posted yeah. about it. Absolutely. Yeah. In other news today, I saw where P. Diddy got arrested. I seen that old Puff so, Daddy. Uh, sounds like he was doing a little uh, yeah dealing of goods. Yeah, hopefully, uh, if that is in fact the case, hopefully that uh, dominoes down and takes down all the players in that game. Yeah. If if you want to sign me up for my dream job, I want to punish child traffickers. Yeah. That, that's my dream job. I want to be the guy in charge of their punishment. Yep. It might be cruel and unusual, Tony, but it won't be unusual if you do it to enough people. It might still be yeah. cruel, but it wouldn't be unusual. wouldn't be though. unusual. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that'll be the next conspiracy theory. And I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but, you know, the, he gets taken down, and so there's numerous high-profile celebrities, and now somebody hits a bridge to take the uh, that attention was, off. I the, saw 10 TikToks on really? that today that, that we're using that to distract yeah. over this arrest. <laughs> and it could be. And it's I'm very not possible. It's not. You know, so, you know, of course, the algorithm is what it is, and it's, They've done a good job on that. But, you know, so I'm getting all these videos about that, too. And uh, if that thing's as deep as they say it is, you know, that's tied into Tupac's killing, Michael Jackson's death. It's like, holy cow. I didn't get to see hardly. I was busy today, so I haven't watched virtually nothing on just seeing he was arrested. They raided one or two of his houses simultaneously and made it quick, you know, so he couldn't erase another or whatever. But that's... And then they just said suspicion of child trafficking. And then that's as far as I've got into it. No, no, nothing. One video I saw, they, they found the footage on the on the Tupac killing. A couple other ones had something to do with Michael Jackson. Like, apparently it's fairly deep. And it named off all the celebrities that if this deal is real, there will be tied into this deal. And it was no a kidding. ton of your A-list Hollywood and musician type people. And I kind of think they probably are guilty on that. And I yeah. and, uh, hope they uh, get what they deserve on that. Yeah, that whole Hollywood thing is a just a big cesspool. I don't understand having that kind of money, and the only thing you can find to rub up against is a child. I, I don't like, get that like, either. Really? Like I, you can, uh, yeah, you, you, know, could, you could literally go and stay at the Playboy Mansion for a week with yeah. you know women that are well of age. Yeah, but no, we're not going to do that. We're going to yeah, uh, yeah. yeah it, 
and I don't mean to sound weird there, but you, yeah. you get the point. Yes. I'm, you know, you're not yeah. doing it to middle middle aged kids. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't have a lot of uh, sympathy for them, and if they are in fact guilty, I'm not condemning them now because, you know, they can pull a lot of weird stuff on that too. But uh, if they are guilty, I hope they get what's coming to them. And I guess, you know how it is. Let's just say that that you and I were going to go outside here and, and, and do some sort of highly illegal drug or whatever. The last thing you're going to do is video. Why does somebody always have a video of this stuff? I mean, who is the idiot that's, you know. Well, like, like the Tupac deal. I'm like, that's got to be on VHS at best. Uh, yeah. You know, at least originally. I'm like, why did you keep the tape? Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, when did that go down? I was in the 90s, well, like yeah. the mid-90s or yeah, something. I think, yeah. I mean, it's been a long time, way before cell phone yeah, cameras. cameras I mean, yeah. Like, why do you still have the footage? Yeah. Richard Nixon, why did yeah. you keep the tape? I mean, this, I just don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> like during the Rodney King deal, put the camera down and help me get my yeah. ass kicked. Exactly. You know? <laughs> but, you know, whatever. But now everything's filmed now, you know. It's like. Yeah. I saw some guy going into a bar here the other day doing something stupid. The bouncer just, bam, drops him. But there's 10 people that already had their cameras out or immediately got their cameras out. I'm like, I'm not faulting you. I don't know what the guy said, did, or whatever. I just saw a little clip of it, but probably what he deserved. You know, clearly the bouncer viewed it that way. Yeah. But it's all on film now. I guess I'm not quick enough on a camera. Let's just say I was standing here and I was scrolling TikTok or whatever, and I seen something that was pretty for sure going to go down. I'm not quick enough. I, I'd have it so jumbled. I couldn't even get to the camera on my phone in time to get it videoed. You know what I mean? Well, <laughs> but I'm kind of the point. Like, I want to live in the moment, too. I like, do, too. I just... You know, you see all these people out with these video cameras or their cell phones at a concert or something. Yeah, like, just how many times are you going back to watch that? Yeah. Like, firework displays. Probably not. Yeah. I don't need to see your firework yeah. display. Your concert on video is terrible. Like, yeah. enjoy the concert while you're there and remember it and, and yep. go on. You the know? last two or three big vacations we took... You can go through my phone now. I'll bet there ain't ten pictures between all three vacations combined. I just I don't do that. I don't get into it. I don't care. Yeah. Now I do regret some of the picture stuff here and there because once it became a digital age, like I remember my freshman year of college, if you had an event, it was still they would the photographer would drop off this book and had all the pictures and they were numbered and you put your card in an envelope or whatever that you wanted picture A two, picture A seven, and picture A twenty five. And you put your thirteen bucks in there or whatever. Well, then my sophomore year, it went to all digital. Well, I'm like, well, I'm not putting my... And they all wanted a credit card online. I'm like, well, I'm not doing that. You know, the internet was new. You know, I didn't use my credit card much then. It's like, ah, I'm not doing that. So I have zero pictures from my sophomore year on, you know? And then you get cell phones. Like, oh, I got all these pictures on it. Oh, I'll, I'll get them later. I've got three cell phones that, that worked when I shut them off. Guess what? They don't come on now, yeah, you know? So th- those pictures are just gone. Yep. And know? same with... I remember as a kid at my house every you know once a year you get out the photo albums look through them with mom or dad or you mm-hmm. know or whatever my kids have really yeah. never we got a few from when henry was born because uh back then you know self the the pictures on your cameras i mean it was starting to come out but it wasn't as popular yeah. as today so we do have a lot of polaroids of him but the yeah. last two kids i'll bet they ain't got <laughs> six printed pictures of themselves here's your scrapbook joe yeah. it's this one picture yeah <laughs> it's just one iphone and <laughs> yeah yeah they so they don't get to really look through them old pictures even. my wife did something cool at the time but i think it got jacked up in the meantime at one time like when we first had kids she started them both an email address so she would immediately email the pictures to that address so that eventually when they got older they could open the email and voila here's all these pictures of my childhood but i think somewhere in there maybe nobody knows what the email Ooh. address slash password etc cetera, etc cetera yep. got lost in the wreckage <laughs> yeah i never was privy to the information so it wasn't me but yeah i have to bring the polaroids back yeah we should yep. no doubt better times you but, but even then like nowadays it you know, we've been to just different get-togethers, neighborhood parties, whatever. And all the young kids, you know, they're just, just looking they, down they, the whole time. They miss the party for taking yeah. pictures of it slash showing their friends yeah. the set. And, you know, it's like, why don't you just enjoy the people you're around and, yeah. and remember it and go on. Yeah, yeah. like well, last fall when I had my party when Iron Mike yeah. and COVID and Tractor Guy and all that was here. If you look that night, there was a couple of us that made some videos that literally took two minutes. But outside yeah. of that, there wasn't really nobody on a phone that night. No. Nobody taking pictures. Nobody just no. – everybody was just there having a good time. And I guess that's probably the age gap because we were yeah. all 
in yeah. our 40s plus. I suppose they had their phones in their hand. We had beers in ours. Yeah, maybe exactly. That was, maybe that was the difference, Tony. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm just not going to live my life looking through a, a cell phone camera. And, no. and it's funny because I get that on TikTok every now and again. You know, whoa, wish I had nothing better to do than make TikToks all day. Like, like it's this whole production. i got to set up this stage, and it's, it's an yeah. eight-hour process to make a one-minute video. Yeah. It's like it took them the same amount of time to watch it as it did for you to make it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because if you ever notice, I don't do much editing. I don't yeah. do anything. No. In fact, I don't do any editing. Yeah. I shoot it and I post it. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. So it took Move. one minute out of my day. Yeah. Absolutely. Moving on. Got it done. There you go. If you don't like it, don't watch But it. ain't it funny, though, how when you get, like, I'll go to TikTok just because it's, you know, it's so much different than the other apps. But, like, you see a one minute video of somebody every day and you really think you know them but in the realm of things the one minute of their day is nothing yeah in the realm of things i mean yeah exactly <laughs> yeah it does give you a little glimpse into their life maybe or it might be all fake yeah you know right but yep it does baffle me some of the things that people are willing to put out there on tiktok yeah it is it's like some of the questions you know i'm like really like that's that's what you, you thought you should put out there? Like, yeah. Middle-aged housewife needs a question to some sort of grooming. Can it care? I'm like, really? Like, clearly your parents aren't on TikTok, I hope. And apparently your kids aren't on TikTok. Like, otherwise, would, you wouldn't put that out there. Like, yeah. I hope, I mean, maybe you're in a big city and you're completely anonymous, you know, but around here, like, everybody knows everybody. Like, yeah. You know, you could try to do an anonymous video. In an, an anonymous location, but I'm going to see a shed or a tree or a car or something in the background. But like, well, I know where he's at. Agreed. You know, like, I don't know. Apparently, they don't have that, and they don't care. You know, whatever. And I realize some of it's for views, giggles, whatever, you know, and that, and that's fine. But I can't get over the ones. So, take whether, like, like I'll use uh, Tractor Guy up there, up north. You know, you, you'll see that, you know, he's working on tractors all the time and, and this and that. And so, you think that that's what he does for a living and all this stuff, and so you feel like you know the guy. And so you, you kind of follow that story that, hey, I'm working on this tractor and blah, blah, blah. And, but he don't really sit there and tell you a story. You just you just yeah. pick it up without even knowing. But when you get to these people who want to make a 50-part series on how their husband cheated on them and give you every detail, it's like, I can't get into any of that. My wife, she'll just, she'll, and it, it may not be something like that, but it might, yeah. might be a murder or something. Yeah. I'm like, I'm out after halfway through the first episode. I'm done. Yeah. If they start off slow, it's like, now. Nah, yeah. especially depends on what mood I'm in. But I'm like, no, nope, moving on. Yeah. Might have been very point. valuable information, but I'm moving on. Yeah. And I'm terrible that way because my the few videos that I I do put on there are probably just as bad on that. So I, I should be better about that, I suppose. But Yeah. Some people on there take forever to get to the point. And yeah. To each their own. That's cool, but. Nothing pisses me off more on a YouTube video. Like, thank goodness people do those videos on, yeah. you know, how to change a headlight in a, in a 94 Buick or whatever. But, like, some guys are like, well, and they give you the whole backstory on the car. And I'm like, I only need the 30 seconds of information on how is this clip release. But instead, you're giving me a four-hour diatribe on the history of Buick. Yeah, and, I don't care. You know, et cetera. I don't care. Just, just give me the pertinent information. Yeah. But to their credit, like, they didn't have to do it at all. Yeah, so. I've I've learned as much from YouTube as I have Google as far as taking yeah. stuff apart that somebody took the time to yeah thank goodness to show they did. it yeah. And I remember when YouTube came out, I'll never forget. I heard it on the radio. They talk about this new app that come out, and you're going to be able to video yourself. And I just remember thinking to myself, who the hell is going to want to video themselves? <laughs> yeah, and make a video about anything. And now it, that's like virtually all every app is yeah. TikTok, YouTube. You know, yeah. everybody's mimicking TikTok now, YouTube Shorts and Snapchat. Yeah. and Yeah, it's all morphed into that. It has. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think it's because Facebook turned into what you had for dinner. So It did, and 60-year-old yeah. women arguing politics. It's just like... And, and just, of course, the feed on Facebook is so weird. Like, and it, My thing on Facebook is like, oh, I, I saw that, but I didn't do anything about it. But I'll go back and look at it here in a minute, and I'll show Kelly whatever it was. Gone. Yep, gone. Never going to get back to it again. Couldn't couldn't find it if you wanted to. Nope. You know, you, you search the page. I ain't on there. Yeah. That, that that part is super frustrating. I can't get over on my Facebook feed for the last month or two is nothing but ads. Like, yeah. When I think because every day I got 50 people want me to like 
yeah, such and such country creations. I don't do any of that stuff on there. That's not well, why I'm there. Well, the problem is once you start doing that, then it's just more and more ads yeah. to this, that, and the other, and then you can't ever get to anything that's actually that you want to see. Yeah. Yeah, that part is frustrating. I mean, essentially, Facebook's turned into the Southern Illinois trader. It has. When we were, exactly. You know, when we were kids, if you wanted to buy a hunting dog or a four-wheeler or a car, you went to the gas station and you bought the Southern Illinois trader. Yep, it was basically just a newspaper. It was a newspaper with all classified ads, and it was yep. broke down by category. If you paid enough, you could put a black and white picture of it, yes. or it could just be text, one or yep. the other. Either way. And uh, that that's how you found what it didn't matter what you're looking for. Pool table, there was five of them. You want a dog? They were broke down. You want a cat? They had a column for that. International Euphora, tractor. Tra- farm equipment, all that was in there. Well, now you always go to Facebook Marketplace, you know, to find that stuff. And and it's funny. That's like the standard answer that everybody goes to. Well, I'm only on Facebook for Marketplace. Yeah. It's like, well, now I've seen you on there scrolling and yeah. like it and got you. Know, yeah. so. <laughs> everybody starts off that way. It's a gateway drug, Tony. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then my personal favorite, like, well, you weren't the you didn't answer within thirty seconds. Like you had to see the see the second the guy posted the ad, or you're not getting it bought because if it's been on there longer than ten minutes, well, it must be too high, or it must be junk, or somebody uh-huh. else had already bought it. Yep. Moving on to the next one. Yep. You know, on the off chance that I am there the second that guy posts it, oh, been on there for two days, must be a piece of shit. Moving yeah. on. <laughs> and I'm just as guilty of it. Like I've thought that before too. I'm like, ah, I should mess it. Ah, I'm not even gonna mess it. It must be too high. It must be bad. Something's gotta be wrong with it. It's been on there too long. The one thing that baffles me, especially with our generation coming up, what I'm going to call old school, you know, we didn't have internet yeah. when we were kids. And, and in fact, I think what we were like juniors or seniors in high school when it was like very first introduced. Yeah. And really none of us knew how to use it or knew nothing about it. I mean, we weren't. Well, by the time you got dialed up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we weren't surfing the web. I mean, the teachers no. would talk about it or maybe show you something that you could do and that was it. But every time I go to order a part or something online, I just sat there and can't help but think, you know, how fortunate we are now. I mean, can, can you imagine 20 years ago when you needed some rare off the world part that how, what the process you had to go through to actually get that ordered? Yeah. And it was a process, but to a certain extent, has that technology actually made it any faster? Like in the grand scheme of it, like, yep, I can find this. You need something for your 4010. Yep. You can find it from 25 other places. You're getting it from Sloan or Sloan express anyway, which is 30 miles from here at the most. But you spend another two hours scrolling through the other places, this, that, and the other. I'm like, so did you gain any time by that? In the two hours that you wasted looking at the other options, you could have drove there and been back. That's true. Like, how many times do I get caught up in something on that? Or, you know, you got to email this order in. and well, so We can't talk to anybody. Well, then something's jacked up with it. Well, then there's another couple days email and so on and so forth. Where before you went to the store, you said, hey, Jim, this is what I need. Okay, no problem. We'll have it in two, three days. I'll call you when it comes in. You know, now we're we got text alerts and we got this that alert and we got time you check all that shit. Your day's spent. Yeah, you know, yeah, you're right. So I don't know that it actually saves you anything. I but, wonder, and I guess to some of that. Now, granted, with us being from small town America, we don't have access to these big stores that yeah. got. You know, you're you're not going to go around anywhere around here and just buy a guitar in any random corner. I mean, no. there's a specialized place you're going to get a guitar. Outside of that, you're going to drive to guitars. House of guitars. <laughs> Used to be Bruce's house of guitars. Yeah, Bruce must have got out though. But take for instance this equipment that we're shooting this podcast with now. We're going to go back in time to 1990 and say we want to get some recording equipment to record a song or whatever. Where where would we have went to do that? Who would you have contacted? I don't know. Yeah. We had to go to Nashville, Tony. I could have been. I we don't had know. To go to Music Row. Maybe the House of Guitars. Like, hey, we can hook you <laughs> yeah, up. I, maybe I Samuel Music probably would have had it back then. Could have been. Yeah. Apparently, people don't rent instruments and stuff like that anymore. I mean, that's that was a big deal when we were kids. Oh, for sure. That, yeah. I mean, that's where every instrument came from for fifty mile circle. Yep. Then it's not even there now. Yeah. Them, you know? them people made a fortune on just the band programs at school. Yeah, I would have thought. Yeah. Yeah. Not anymore. But it is funny to think nowadays that any item you want on this planet is yeah. at your fingertips. Might yeah. take a couple of days to get it, but you yeah. can find it. You can find it generally, yeah. It's probably a Chinese piece of shit, and you'll have to buy another one. Yep. But yeah. Yeah, who knew? We could have been learning more about computers. Instead, we were spending our time learning how to play the recorder. Yeah. I'm going to get me a recorder. I'm going to go online, because I know where you'd get one, and get me a recorder, and I'm going to make a TikTok. Next time I'm in the shop and something stopped me, I'm going <laughs> to yeah, get out I, the recorder and play I just it. I ran into the day. I'm like, I could change this hydraulic pump on this tractor, or I could play the recorder. 
you know, see if it just falls off. Yeah. I, I played it a tune, like the Pied Piper, but it didn't work. It didn't? Yeah. No, I still had to get the wrenches out. Yep. Damn the luck. Well, if you'd have known a pronoun from an adverb, you might have got some. That would have made all the difference. Yep. Or underlined a prepositional Which, phrase. In, so all that stuff has a – let me rephrase that. The English skill stuff has a purpose, kind of, sort of. But then it's like, oh, nobody writes letters anymore. Nobody writes official letterhead. It's all emails, and apparently in emails, grammar's out the window, capitalization's out the window. You know, now people are fussy. Well, you 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 don't need to leave two spaces behind a period. Well, by God, that's the way I was that's talking. That's the way that's I was going to do it. I would do that know? on text messages. Absolutely. All these people, like, you know how the text message world is. Yeah. I mean, it's anything but grammar. Yeah. It's just but, podgepodge shit put together. Yeah. We don't have commas. And, we don't have periods. And at the end of the day, you still get the point and know what the guy was yeah, saying. So No doubt. I do love the, the things that's, you know, if you know, you know, and it's just a bunch of letters, and it's like the first letter of every thing, it's like, get your ass in the house, in the house before you, know, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yep, I know exactly what that parent's saying, and it was literally just the first letter of every word, uh-huh. you know, put together. But So I guess maybe we don't need the, the grammar and the punctuation. The, the part that gets me on the whole English, especially the English language, is how... Over here, this letter makes this sound, but over here, the same letter is not even remotely close. It's like, what are we doing? Gallagher had a whole series on this, Tony. Really? Do you, you remember Gallagher with the watermelons who always smashed him? The comedian? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He had a whole series on, on the letters. He had one of those, it was like a flip scoreboard, like they would use at a volleyball game, mm-hmm. you know, at the rec center or whatever, with letters. And he would go through, you know, this word's pronounced like this. Flip this one letter. It should be this. No, but it's not. It's something else. But that's. Most of the listeners will have no idea who Gallagher was and uh, and or any of his skits, but he always had a the sledgematic and busted fruit and spray. Was it. he the guy that wore the funny hat? Had a big mustache, mustache, long hair. Yes, yeah, kind had, of a had mullet. And a giant wooden sledgehammer and always yep. busted watermelons partway yep. through the show. Yeah. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and I world. get it. There, there is some things to the English or grammar that I mean you need. Drive out to the high school tomorrow. And see if anybody can lay out a letter properly. Oh, with, yeah, with, with the, the date and the, the yep. date and the address and all that. And, like, and dent the first part yeah. of the... I, my guess is they can't do it. Nah, probably not. And I'm not knocking the kids. No. They, they don't probably need to know how to do yeah. that. But because nothing official comes out like that anymore. Yeah. You don't write... Like, like we didn't have to learn to write shorthand. Yeah. You know, most of our grandparents could yeah. for whatever reason. But, of course, now the kids, they can't read cursive. Yeah. So we had a deal well, it was when Dad was sick. The local hospital here got hacked by the Chinese or the Russians. I don't remember which one. Some communist organization, Democrat so, Party. So, exactly. So they had to run. They had to run handwritten stuff from one department to the next. Well, the doctor's writing cursive. Nobody under the age of thirty could read that. So they're taking these notes. They have no idea what to say because they can't read cursive, which boggles my mind. How do you write a check if you can't read cursive? What are these teachers doing at school? I mean, that was in third grade. Oh, we learned that stupid lined paper, and you had remember the chalkboard deals. Yeah. You had to hold three pieces of chalk, yep. so you could do the chalkboard. Sure enough, and then you'd go up there and you'd write your letters. And, and I should have paid a little more attention to that because I can't write for shit anymore. My yeah. handwriting is terrible. Now. I actually don't write in cursive much for the simple fact that I don't write much. It's a all my stuff is like a list, the bolt yeah. here, or this or that. So I, I I don't write it in cursive just because it's. Yeah. For whatever reason. I, I couldn't tell you last time I sat down and actually wrote a letter, a paragraph, anything. Let's, I mean, let's bring it back. Let's start writing we handwritten should. letters. We're going to start next doing TikTok. Time want, next time I want to come over, I'm going to write you a letter. Yeah, you should. I'll mail it in advance. Hey, Saturday, what are yeah. you doing? You want to shoot a podcast. And we can put but, this on TikTok. I can be like, oh, postcard for Nick. Oh, you'll be here Saturday. Sweet. By, by the time you agree to it, send me a letter back. It'll be Tuesday of the next week. Well, by the time the post office <laughs> fucking loses it. That ain't no shit. Send some stuff to Pennsylvania. A couple weeks ago, the twenty first of March, it was in it was in PA. Today it was in Kansas. No idea Jeez. why. Nobody can tell me why. It's priority. No. Nope. Apparently it wasn't too high a priority. <laughs> wasn't high priority. God. I could tell you didn't have that in the Pony Express days, Tony. That no, horse you didn't. been damn tired. That's right. It had dropped it off at the right spot. That's what we're bringing back. Pony Express. Pony Express. <laughs> A lot of our listeners probably don't remember Joe Biden's economy. Oh, delivering it by horse may be the only way we can do could it. Could be. We're going green. Yeah. Yep. But a lot of of the listeners here probably don't remember back when it was called Federal Express. Yeah, that's that was before true. FedEx. It was Federal Express when we were kids. 
So correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't that guy get started? Yep, by shipping ma- money? Checks. Yep. He would take checks, and it was federal express. A lot of it was checks from the government. Exactly. That's where the federal part came in. He a plane or whatever, and he would air freight yep. checks because that made so much difference on the interest yep. of large-scale transactions. He yep. was his college professor, I think, told him that that was the stupidest idea he'd ever heard, and that would never work. And so that guy sends that guy something every year, be like, ha, 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 sends him his financial statement or whatever. I'm trying to think, did that come out of the University of Illinois also? That I'm not sure of. That I couldn't tell you. But, yeah, basically, instead of... Playboy and Bill Murray did, but I don't know about that. Okay, I couldn't remember. But, nonetheless, so is what Nick's saying, is if I'm in Chicago and I want to mail a very large check, $500 million, to somebody in Shanghai, China, yeah. by the time it takes it to get there two weeks later, this guy's racked up $50,000 worth of interest and yeah. hasn't even got the money yet. Yeah. To where this guy said, hey, I'll just fly it over there personally, then you'll have it tomorrow. Yeah. So that's how FedEx. Started. I remember in the book, uh, "It Doesn't Take a Hero" by H. Norman Schwarzkopf, one of the greatest generals we've ever had yep. in the history of the U.S. military. And there was a section in there when Saudi Arabia wrote us some check during Gulf War One. It was like seven hundred sixty million or some shit, and they flew it immediately back because the interest, the time that plane was in the air, the interest on that money that they missed out of just, and they did fly it, but that was. A ton of money. Sure. Like, you know, I don't remember now what exactly what the figure was. I haven't read that book in years, but it's a good read. I recommend it. But, uh, and the, of course, when you start playing in the millions and billions, like. That adds up in a big hurry. It adds, adds up fast. And that was a genius business plan for that guy. But, but you know what baffles me? How FedEx, UPS, whoever else, DHL, they can, for the most part, in a timely fashion, yeah. get things to and fro. There's always a few hangups here or there. But for the yeah, most part, the most part I'm good. pretty confident. USPS. I have no confidence whatsoever. Like, <laughs> can't pull off this equipment. To no. Him. So, like, you know, farmers got to file by March first their taxes or whatever. We run it right up to the deadline. Yeah. And ended up filing the last day of February there. And I told the wife, I'm like, I'm have to to FedEx this thing just so yeah. I know that they get it in time. I yeah. mean, it just it's insane. Mm-hmm. I just can't fathom how the government pisses so much money away in other areas. Don't think twice about it. But when it comes to the post office or stuff that we actually need, it's like they're always budget cuts and short staffed and won't spend no money. Yeah, it, I don't it, get it. It is, uh, it is mind boggling. Like you put you, you put UPS in charge of the post office. That's a one eighty turnaround, and it makes money the first week. Yeah, you know for sure. But whatever, like that Federal Express deal. Like how much of that's just timing, though. Like the guy had a good idea, but like five years before that, maybe you couldn't get couldn't got enough pilots or got a plane or whatever, you know, and and that's probably a poor example, but a lot of times the guys end up being these great businessmen. A lot of it just had to do with timing and they hit it, hit at the right time, made a ton of money. Well, then it's, I assume they say it is fairly easy to make a bunch of money. Once you have a bunch of money, I'll never know, but you know, you you see some of that, you know, guys that hit it big in the dot-com era or, you know, whatever, like, you know, 10, 20 years after the fact, like, doing those check deals wouldn't have been, now you can just ACH it through the computer system. And they, you didn't need that service necessarily, yeah. which is why they deliver packages now, not checks. And back you then, know? I guess, if I'm a big business or individual, whoever, and I'm going to write you a check that is so big that it needs to be flown over there to avoid the interest, well, at that point, I probably have enough money. I got my own plane. Why wouldn't I just fly it myself? Yeah, you know, exactly. I, I don't know how that like works. Said, a lot of it's just timing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a lot of really cool businesses started that, were either timing or grease and palms. I maybe both. I don't yeah. know. But yeah, one probably had to lead to the other. But yeah, yeah, and that's why you need to invest like Nancy does. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she's yeah. the best there is at it. Yeah, get in Congress and then you'll have the inside yeah. loop on all of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I don't know. Yeah, it's a mixed up world out there these days. It is. Yeah, it is. But, I would get involved in politics if you. Said you'd give me a million dollars. No. So yeah, I don't have the, I don't have the stomach for it anymore. I can't take the, the PC bullshit and the beat around the bush. Let's just get to the rat kill and find the root of the problem and, and get it over with. Like they overcomplicate all that stuff. They throw ten thousand things together in the same bill. It's like, well, so and so voted against this. Yeah, but the fifteen other things that were in that bill were allegedly good things. Yeah. you know, so. 
Which is why they throw them together so they can get. Does it become an ego thing? And let's just let's just pick Hillary Clinton out of the the pile just because it's an easy target. You know, worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. You know what? Are you, what are you still doing in that cesspool? Is it, is yeah. it just now an ego power, power trip power. thing? Well, and, and I think you have to stay in there to keep covering your ass, right? I I suppose. Like I mean, once you're out, well then you then you can't pull the the strings of the people you need to cover up all the dirty shit you did before. You know. It's like the mafia, Tony. You it is. Once you're in, you're in. You're in. I mean, you can't get out. Yeah. And that's no disrespect to the mafia because I actually have more respect for them than I do. Hillary. Oh, I've, I've said a hundred times <laughs> but, in the event that I was to be elected president, my entire cabinet is going to be mafia because they get shit done. Yes. They make a, a very, believer out of everybody. In a very efficient manner. Exactly. Yeah. They pull it off quick. Yeah. Yep. I would have no problem with that whatsoever. <laughs> yep. No doubt. No yep. Doubt. So what else is new? Anything? Oh, nothing else too super exciting. Just like I said, gearing up for spring. Started yeah, working on the older. old scout yet? You putting it together? I got a pile of parts for it. I haven't got it. Haven't got it out yet. Just haven't had time. Yeah. I've been trying. I to get, get it. I can't. Uh, I can't yeah. be jacking with that when I need to get guys planting tractors done with with spring coming on. But yep, this and, summer I'll get around to it. Hopefully. And for those of you listening, I said this on TikTok two days ago, and. For legal purposes, I'm not saying any more, <laughs> but I'm just going to say that Saturday, August 3rd, I will be at the Brew Bank in Stewartson, Illinois, with my beater with a heater. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, there you go. So, whatever happens, happens. Yeah. Not sure. Not sure deal. We're just leaving it at that. Yep. And that's as far as it goes. Yep. It's hard to say what Buick you might have by then. That's, that's true. I mean, it's escalating. Yep. At a I sold, pace. sold the old Redmond to my brother. He yeah. was looking for a work car, so I said, got just the car you need. Yeah. I upgraded to this other one here. So Yeah. Yep. Been driving the shit out of the old seventy eight Ford. Yeah. Runner every day. Up Sweet. and down the road. Rain, snow, salt. I don't care. Just drive it. <laughs> drive it. I get it. That's what's there for. Exactly. It's what Henry Ford would have wanted. It is. Yep, it truly is. Yep, I'm not gonna have it sitting in the corner of the shed and covered up. Yeah. No, I get that. No, I'll get the old scout out of here. I got got some stuff for it. Need to order some more stuff for it. But I mean, it's drivable now. But I forgot how good a shape that thing was actually in till yeah. You know, the other day he was out in the shed there. I mean, yeah, that isn't. Yeah, it's not. Uh, I mean, it didn't have major rust anywhere. No, I need to. I need to do something with it. Did so, you did you dump stay bill in the gas? You know Paul Harvey was always a big <laughs> big guy on no, stay bill. <laughs> no, I uh, <laughs> think she'll just take off and run. She'll take off and run. If I if I get the battery charged up, put a fresh battery in, it'll just fire up and run. <laughs> or at least it always has. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've never had any trouble with that. Just that's one vehicle I have not met on the road in years as a scout. You know, when no. we were kids, every now and again you'd see one yeah, here or there. Not very often anymore. Of course, back then they weren't. You know, some of them was 20 years old. You know, yeah. they weren't that old of a vehicle. But Yeah, now they're getting there, and most of them rusted out when they were five years old. So, Yep. Yeah, I got a lot of projects, Tony. Yeah, I know. Between that, that and that 14 and two or three other tractors I want to redo and so on and so forth. Which so. that 14 nits getting down to the short rows on it. Yeah, too. I don't have a ton of stuff to do to it yet. Just It's one of those things, if I wasn't going to paint it, wouldn't be a big deal. But since I want to paint it, well, I want everything tight and right, and so then that turns into a bigger deal, yeah. you know. And then it's then it's the age old debate: Would well, you paint like IH did, where you just hose it down in red, or do you pull this hose off or tape it off or this? That, you know, like International didn't do that; they painted it all red. Exactly. You know, but yeah. To, to be truly original, you paint over all that. You I paint mean, over all that. The, the boots and the clutch booster, all that. I mean, they just paint over all that shit. I don't really want to do it that way. So, I mean, we'll see. But I got a few. A few minor things, nothing major to do to it yet. The bad part on them old tractors is it's really hard to get them to not leak. You yeah. know what I mean? You can fix them now, yeah. But in six months, it might be just a drift yeah. or a whatever. But Something man, it's different. I want them all fixed, and it's yeah. hard to keep one of them things tight where it doesn't mm-hmm. leak a drop. You know, Dad always said internationals were designed to leak, and that's huh. probably true. Yeah, <laughs> my forty ten does. I they mean, all got a they... drip somewhere. You know. <clears throat> yep, just part of it. Yeah, but I'd like for it to be right at least initially. So yeah, I get that. Yeah, I'll probably get around to it here. Hopefully this summer. It ought to look pretty good, though. Time you yeah. get. Yeah, 
Should be fine. It's fine. almost a waste, though, because I'm not going to do anything with the damn thing, you know, other than cruising around here and there. And, Which, luckily, there's enough tractor drives around here. Yeah. You I'll, can. I mean, I'll put it on something eventually, I suppose. But, yeah. But, like I said, I got a handful of other ones that I want to do similar things with. That some of them need a lot. Some of them don't need much. But I, I want to get on those, too. I need to get my grandpa's old 630 case out and get it redone. And But I've been saying that for 25 years. Yeah. But I'd like to get that get that out and going too we were going to do that this winter and just didn't happen some of that's hard when you get a couple generations deep it's like well i want to keep this one and redo it because it was grandpa's and this one was dad's and this one was mine yeah no doubt um yeah i got several several tractors on that lineup these days so i gotta get get on that you know get all that taken care of i want to get the old v8 repainted and i just haven't got around to that it doesn't really need anything it just needs painted yeah but yeah, and that, you know, painting a tractor, that's, I mean, I'm not telling you now, that's quite the undertaking. I mean, it time is. You, yeah, especially yeah. if you're going to do, like you said, and tape the certain only, stuff off. The only major thing I got to do to it's, you know, half those stupid little square nuts that pop in there need replaced or, you know, because they're shitty and janky anyway. And you know, I wouldn't mind having the valve covers chromed and the, the headlight bezel and the grill and that shit chromed yeah. possibly. It's like, well, Which, so I got to get guess, that done. Well, you have to take most of that back down to somewhat bare metal because i mean the paint on it's good it's just not factory color yeah I mean, so I, how do so, you go so about that's my debate i'm i'm scared to death to have it blasted or i, I won't sandblast it so you could media blast it or soda blast it or they got walnut shells or this that and the other or i could just paint over it yeah or i could honestly i kind of think if i just pressure wash it you know Several times, I can probably just blow most of that shit off. Yeah. I will tell you this much. Just from my experience with my 4010, because I didn't sandblast it either, I found the best thing that worked was the just the regular paint stripper you get at Walmart, Menards, whatever. I mean, I'd slap that stuff on there just thick as hell. I'd usually let it set overnight. I'd do another coat of the paint stripper, and then you could come back the following day with a wire brush, and, I mean, that shit would just fall off. I mean, just really? down to bare metal. I mean, so it's a little bit time-consuming yeah. letting it soak. And and I found the wire brush is what worked the best because I had scrapers. I took the grinder with the wire yeah. wheel, all that shit. It seemed like like a grinder with a wire wheel. It was just almost like it, up. Yeah, and it, it was almost like it burnt through it and almost burned it to the metal. Yeah. So just a regular handheld wire brush, and that shit just fell off in piles. I can believe that. No, and then, got, of course, I didn't do it to the frame. or not. It was just the fenders and the sheet metal. I didn't do the frame or anything yeah. like that. You know? you know, it's got one of those old stupid square chrome grills in it from way back because a uh, long story. But the grill that was in it ended up getting robbed for something else. And and I had another one for it because some of those were cast aluminum and some of them were plastic. Yep. Well, I had a cast aluminum one there. I can't find that thing to save my life. I don't know if Dad sold it, used it in something else, put it in something else or whatever. No, Nimmy probably sold it. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I found the headlight bezel because I bought all that stuff when we were doing a pulling tractor for a guy. And we ended up getting all custom sheet metal made for it so it was way bigger so none of it fit. So I'm like, I'll just keep that back. I'll send all that shit off and have it chromed, swap it out. Well... The grill's gone, so I got to find another one of those because I'm not going to use the one that's in it. But I don't want to use the plastic one because it's agree. plastic. Yeah. So I got to track another one of those down, which is not a huge big deal. I just got to take the time to do it, you know. Yeah, yeah, I get it. it. Yeah, that stuff takes time. I mean, you'd think, man, painting this tractor, I can pop this in and out and be good to go. But boy, it sure don't work. I mean, it sure don't work that way. It's time, time you start talking wheels and rims. You know, I want to paint the weights. You know, for farming, we didn't have any weights on it because we just planted with it. And it's got two sets on the rear because that's what it had when we got it. But I'd like to put four on it probably just from a look standpoint. I want to put a full rack on the front or at least some weights on the front. Sure. I want to paint them up the way they should be painted, the way God intended IH weights to be painted. Well, that takes hours to yep, do it does. nicely do and correctly, it right. at least for the outside too. Yep. You know, it takes a long time. And so I got to get – I got a lot of shit to get done. Who, who knows if we'll ever get to it, but – I guess at the end of the day, it probably don't matter anyway, but I'll try to get to it. Yeah, you need to just win the lottery, then you can just do that full time. But No doubt. I still wouldn't got, have enough got to play the lottery to win the lottery. That's and true. It's I hard, don't do that. It's so. hard to win if you don't play, and I don't play. So, but I don't know. Did anybody win the one the last time? Like it, I did. I seen it was up to 800 million. It was 900 and some last time I saw oh, it, but I don't know if anybody won that one or not. Yeah, I don't, so, don't keep up with it. I can I, afford the lifestyle I'm currently living with that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Then I might get back into tractor pulling. But, yeah, so you maybe. get to keep four hundred and some million. If I had four hundred and some million, I'd probably get back in. 
Yeah. A little different approach to it, probably, but I'd sure. probably get back in. Yeah, when you got the kind of money you can spend a million dollars a day for a little over a year. Yeah. I would probably be out of stuff to, well, I don't know, because, you know, one day I'm going to rack up something was $50 million a day that I want. Yeah, where tomorrow no I may only spend 500000 so I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'd probably probably get back in at some level of that deal, but, yeah. I don't think I'm going to have to worry about it, though. So. I don't know. What what would a guy do if you woke up tomorrow and you had $400 million just cash? That was yours free and clear coming from the lifestyle that we live now tomorrow an instant four hundred million. I don't know that I'd go out and be buying a bunch of land and going hog wild. I, I, I just I don't know. And unfortunately, you'd have to move to where nobody knew you. Yeah. You know, almost. Well, the first thing you need to do is hire ten of your buddies. Otherwise, who are you going to screw off with? Agreed. You you're going to you're gonna have to pay your buddies a hundred grand a year just to hang out with you, because otherwise, yeah, they're all at work. They're all at work, and here you got four hundred million dollars, and you're sitting around by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So, once again, problem, probably not a problem I have to worry about. But yeah, I, I don't think so either. I don't have the most pimped out Volvo you ever saw. Tony. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just because I could. Uh-huh. Yeah, that would throw everybody for a loop. Yes, it would. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but, I don't know. Yeah, that would be a, a drastic lifestyle change. The headaches that would go along with that would probably make it not worth it at some level. Yeah, you'd have to have a full-time lawyer, accountant, accountant all that. Bodyguard, you'd have to have it all. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have to have it all. I really do think you'd run out of stuff to do. I mean, You'd have to do it Brewster's Million style. You ever seen that yeah, movie? Yep. Blow through the first $30 million so that you're tired of spending money, and you just go on from there. Which, truthfully, between farming and tractor pulling, wouldn't take that long. No, you could actually, yeah, yeah. you could pull that off in pretty short order. Truthfully, I mean, you could pull that off and not leave the county. Pretty, I easy. for sure wouldn't build a new big fancy house. I don't think because no, I'm not going to give this state the justification. I wouldn't put them in there a whole lot. Yeah, that no. either. I don't no. know if I'd go buying a bunch of land. I, I don't know what I would do. I really, I just, I don't know. I don't know. It'd be nice to have. A little spread, We're like oh, I'd like to plant today. It's February, but yeah. I feel like we're on the planter. Yeah, yeah, or you know, <laughs> sixty acres with just track hoes and dozers, and you just call your friends and dig holes and fill them in. Six hundred and forty acres of woods with forty acres cut out in the middle, and that's where you live in the middle. And yeah, you know, we're going to go four wheeler riding today. We don't have to. Leave. We don't have to go to Attica. We don't have to go to Missouri. We're just right here. Oh yeah, you want to knock a tree down with a high hoe? That one. That one's kind of bothering me anyway. Fire up the cat, knock it down. That, w- that part would be fun. That would be fun. Yeah. I don't know that I would do the whistling diesel and build a new fancy shop and then fly helicopters through yeah, the ceiling. Yeah, I probably wouldn't do that. Stuff like that. That I, just, I, I just couldn't be wasteful like that. I, I love watching his videos. They're hilarious. But it's like, holy Christ, this guy goes through a lot of money. I mean, when you look yeah. at what he has tore up just in his new shop alone. It's a lot. It's, it's a, a bunch. Lot. It's a lot. And it, I mean, it don't bother me, and I couldn't care less. It ain't my money, but it's like, holy potatoes, this guy is just tearing up shit left and right. I always said I would approach tractor pulling a little different. I would probably go to our local county fair and donate a lot of money to the fairgrounds, and then I would have a few, several pulls there a year, and I wouldn't have to go very far. That's true, yeah. <laughs> they, they could come to me. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> that's the part I don't like is the travel and this, that, you know, which I suppose wouldn't bother me as much if I wasn't missing work and somebody else was driving the semi, et yeah. cetera. And but, you could just be like, well, you go ahead and take off. I'll be there in a couple of days yeah, in the plane. Yeah, I'll just fly in. Yeah, yeah. that would be nice. But then I think about every celebrity that's got killed in their own plane. I like, know. I know, agree. Davy Allison, the Big Bopper, so yep. on and so forth. But I just saw one the other day on somebody else that was supposed to be on. It wasn't Tammy Wynette. It was uh, Patsy Cline, I think. Yeah, her her and her. George home. Jones had ate her chicken dinner. So she didn't like to eat a big meal. I think it was Patsy Cline. I could be wrong. It was one of those old-time famous country women singers. She didn't like to eat a big meal before a show. And I think it was George Jones. I think. Came in drunk. Saw this chicken dinner sitting there. Ate it. She got done. Got mad. Wouldn't take him on the plane. And then her plane crashed. No kidding. Yeah. I'll be damned. Yeah. She, he was supposed to fly with her to the next show. And she's like, no, to hell with it. You're not going with me. And then her plane crashed. Did it not? Didn't yeah, she, it did. She yeah, she got a plane, plane crash. Yep. Yeah, it's Patsy Klein. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Chicken, chicken dinner saved his life. He come, he come in drunk. And there's yeah. at this being drunk fried fried him. chicken mashed potatoes or whatever. He was like, oh, I really need that before I can go on stage. And he woofed it down. And yeah, I'll be she, damned. She wasn't happy and wouldn't let him ride on the plane. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's been a lot of them. Reba McIntyre's whole band. Mm-hmm. Well, Waylon Jennings was supposed to be on a plane. With, yeah, with, with Buddy Holly and yeah. the Big Bopper in it. Yep. Yeah. Sure enough, lost a bet, didn't he? Did they uh, draw coin straws? toss, yeah, yeah, or whatever, yeah. yep, because, uh, yeah, the heater was out on the bus, and they yeah. flipped coins or drew straws, whatever. And Here's what I know about planes, Tony, if I ever get that kind of money. Planes got to have four engines and two pilots, or my fat ass ain't getting on it. Okay? Yeah. Plane with one engine will take you all the way to the scene of the crash. Yeah. Those <laughs> little planes, I've flown on them a few times. They make me nervous. Yeah. Yeah, they're not, uh, they're not as robust as I'd like them to no. be. Same with helicopters. I, I've flown on helicopters a few times. And I'm if like, I fly on a helicopter, I'm looking for Airwolf. Mm-hmm. You know, I want something that's pretty badass. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not looking to be on your, your local. Yeah, look at John Denver gets killed in a fucking ultralight. I yeah. mean, why would you have one of them with his fame and fortune? An yeah. ultralight of all things? Yeah, no <laughs> shit. It's one thing you go down in a Learjet. I mean, but yeah. Yeah, you went down in an ultralight. Come on. Yeah. No, <laughs> no thanks. Yeah, I'll take something bigger than that. Yeah, that's just not my not my cup of tea. No, no, it's not. But next thing you know, you're crossing a bridge on your way to work, and you know some asshole runs into it, knocks the bridge down. So yeah. I suppose it's your time. It's your time. I, yeah, I suppose. Try not to increase my odds any more than I have to. But I guess the flip side of that is is my hat's off to whether you're a, a comedian, a music singer, whatever you know, living on tour buses. Man, I couldn't do that. Just no, three hundred days a year, just. On no. a bus? No thanks. Yeah, I'm good there. We took a bus on, you know, senior trip. That was about all the tour bus that I needed. Yeah, same here. That's just yeah. not my jam. I mean, that was a great trip, but buses are not my thing. Yeah, and I don't know why more of them don't fly. I mean, maybe it's the expense, but I'm, and most of them, you know, when they're doing a tour, they're going from St. Louis to Indianapolis. You know what I mean? It's yeah, not, they're not it's, going that far. But still, it's the fact you've been on this bus for nine weeks straight. Yeah. That just, yeah. Yeah, I'm good there. I'm good there. Give me a residency in Vegas. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I'll just, yeah. Yep. Shack I'll, me up with Celine Dion or whoever the new <laughs> yeah. ticket is in town. Yeah, I'll just uh I'll just keep playing my same show here and there and move on. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, not something I'm gonna have to worry about. Yeah, so. I don't I don't think I'll have to be uh booking any tours or anything like that, but No. 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 So you done a uh a video on the 1580 Heston with Ryan Kelly yeah, the other day. Yeah, yeah, we did a tractor story. I think Ryan's on to something. If you guys ain't checked it out, go to YouTube. Check out WI Titan 2, Ryan Kelly. He's going around the Midwest checking out different tractor stories. You know, basically yeah. if somebody's got a – and it, 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 this not every story is this way, but just for instance, if somebody bought a 4010 new yeah. – and he just interviews yeah. them, you know, that they've had it for... Just a unique story to them. It doesn't have to be, like, necessarily the rarest tractor you've ever seen. Just yeah, that tractor has a story on their farm yeah. for whatever reason. And it's you know? any and all brands, and, and he's he's really honest. Grandpa it. fell off of it. Grandpa took a loan to buy it. Yep, traded in a team of mules for yeah, it. You know, whatever, you know. like, it, you know, they're all unique in their own way. Yeah. Yeah, they're good stories, for sure. Yeah, you need to do more videos on that Heston. A lot of people still don't realize still Heston. Don't realize they had them, yeah. Tractors and yeah. I, hell, I suppose I probably wouldn't either if you guys wouldn't have sold them yeah. when I was kids. Yeah, I mean, no doubt. Just because of you guys is why they're around here. There, yeah. I mean, what no other reason? Wasn't anybody else close? No. How far would a guy had to went to the next dealer that sold tractors in this the area? The next one that sold tractors would have been. I honestly can't tell you. Had to been a long way. I don't know. It had been fairly far. There's a spot in Oklahoma, Texas, somewhere in there that somebody always comments. Must have been kind of popular yeah, there. Yeah, there was a bunch of them in Oklahoma. Was there, there a ton of them on feedlots and stuff in Oklahoma? There was a few dealers in Kentucky, for sure, that I know of. Um, I know one in northern Illinois, like up around Yorkville. Um, other than that, I don't know that I can tell you for sure. Of course, there again, I mean, I was... yeah. I was three to 12, you know, <laughs> something like that, three to 15, yeah. somewhere in there. I mean, like, it, so it's hard to, you know, my memory is pretty good for the most part, but it isn't that good. No. I wasn't paying that much attention to that stuff back then, you know. And even when Fiat bought New Holland, it's like, well, 
who bought who here? And then, you know, they chose a different path, and that's fine. It's probably the way to go, but, you know, wasn't really thinking it would go that way necessarily. So, did you know that, and I'm not going to mention any names, and, and it's probably all of them, but these companies nowadays are getting carbon credits from the government or however this works to reduce the number of tillage tools that, that they produce. Really? And the flip side to that is, is they're all coming out with 800 plus horse tractors. Yeah. Now, because- now, now just what are you doing with an 800 horse tractor? <laughs> what, what, what would you be your first guess that you would need 800 horse for? Well, probably to put on a PTO generator once the power grid collapses. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But that that is a fact that they are actually giving company carbon credits. I can believe that to reduce the number of tillage tools. We are so stupid. The, the yeah. make believe shit that we do with the illusion of money, and and the fake shit that we do is just boggles the mind. It like does. if you were just, and I we, we've talked about this before, but like if you're playing the game Command and Conquer, which was popular when we were younger. The first thing you do is build a shitload of power stations because you can't build anything else for self-defense to build your city or anything without a shitload of power. Once stations. the power's out, you're done. The power's out, you're done. And none of those were wind. None of those were solar. No. And you wouldn't waste the, the real estate building that stupid shit. You built nuclear power plants. They're small, and they produce a shitload of power for a lot of people, a lot of things instantly. So that's what you build, and that's real life. That That's the way it should be done. You, If you're starting your own society, if you're starting from ground zero, we drop you off in Liberia. We drop you off in Mexico, California at this point, um, and honestly, Chicago. But yeah. if we drop you off and, and no, there's no, no infrastructure, nothing there, the first thing you're going to be like, well, I guess I'll get a solar panel out and uh, see if I can't uh, all, order, all Amazon me in a solar panel and see if I can't get some power for this thing. Hell no. You're going to build the most efficient thing that produces the most efficient power the most power, so that you can expand from there. And I'm not seeing emissions be damned on some of this, but, like, we're worried about all this. Meanwhile, China, India, every other country in the world, for the most part, is doing whatever the hell they want to do. It's net zero. Yeah. I And I and forgive me if we've talked about this, maybe even on the last podcast. We, yeah. we get to drinking, and I forget what we talked about. No doubt. But <laughs> nonetheless, so... If this is an emergency, right? Because, I mean, we're told that now yeah. the climate change, we're getting to the emergency stage, yes. right? Okay. Yes. So, in my opinion, when something's an emergency, you cut all non-essentials starting yep. out, right? Yep. Okay. So, to me, no more Olympics, no more World Series, no more sports of any kind. Yeah. None of that shit. That's not essential. No. Non-essential. I mean, look at the carbon footprint that just the, the NCAA tournament has. Yeah. Oh, it's huge. From the people driving to it, the people, you yeah. know, the teams, the news crews, the all over the... I mean, just look at the paper that gets wasted in making the brackets. Yeah, agreed. But that's people running chainsaws, evil two-stroke chainsaws, polluting the world. Yeah, so it's all smoke and mirrors, every bit but of My it. thing is like, okay, politicians want to push that down your throat that you need to do this and you need to do that. Okay, that's neat. What are you driving? Yep. And when was the last time you were on a plane how flying big, by yourself? How big's your house? How big's your house? You cut down U.S. military. Not that I want our soldiers getting blown up because their shit's regenning. But if it's good for us, it's good for them. Agreed. The presidential limo, that son of a bitch is electric, and it goes 45 mile an hour, and it's got a 100-mile range. We'll stop, and we'll charge it up. I don't care if we've got to get a team of homeless guys on the corner with bike generators, and they pedal their asses off till that thing's charged back up. I don't care how we do it, but we're going to go as green as possible on that deal, right? Like they're Totally agree. Lead by example. Totally agree. Lead by example. Yep. But I don't see any of them doing any of that. Could you imagine... If all we have ever known in the history of our life is electric vehicles, and then all at once, tomorrow somebody comes out and says, you know what, I got this vehicle, got this little tank here on the side, <laughs> you dump this gasoline in this, you can drive 600 miles. And when you get to that 600 miles, just dump another 10 gallon in it, and you can go another 600. Yeah. People will be lined up around the fucking block, block to buy one of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now we're going to subsidize electric vehicles even more because Ford basically said, hey, we're done. Th- this shit ain't working. We're not making any money off of it. Like, we're done. Oh, no, we're going to double down. We're going to yeah. we're gonna raise the tax on, on petroleum vehicles, and we're going to give more credits for the electric shit. But once again, why, aren't, why isn't the government flying electric planes? I agree. You know? It, 
Lead by example. You White guys House. Do it. You guys do it first. We'll follow suit. White House, strictly candlelight. No yeah. computers, no nothing. No. This is a crisis. We're going to die. Yeah. So we have to cut everything. We in have the to. 70s, we were too cold. In the 80s, we were too hot. We had this huge hole in the ozone, which near as I can tell is letting out the bad shit. I think we could get the Aquanet out and try to get the hole made bigger again. I agree. It seems like we're clamming ourselves up now. Yeah. It, 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 all it is is a payoff. Like Al Gore, has, his house burns more than my house and your house will in the next 10 years. Yep. He does that in a week. He's made millions of dollars off of his green bullshit. He didn't abide by any of it. But it was a nice little agenda he pushed, got invested in the right companies. He's made a ton of money out of it. Yep. You know? See that hailstorm that came through Texas the other day and wiped out all those solar panels? I did, yeah. I'm assuming that will break an insurance company. I would assume. You know? Don't know how it couldn't. But how much energy is going to be wasted making replacement panels for those damn things? Putting them up and then disposing yep. of the oven. Um, if that had been a coal-fired power plant, it wouldn't, that little bit of hail wouldn't hurt shit. Nope. Turns out if you put glass out in the open, it breaks. Yeah. No shit. Who'd have knew? Who'd have yeah. thought of that? Yep. Can't I'm, believe it. I'm to the point now, though, that we've taken this far enough that now I want to get in on the piece of action, and I, I want to invent some kind of elixir bullshit that I can go through with a sprayer and spray on these solar panels, and it'll clean them. You know what yes. I mean? And just so we just sprayed on there, we wait for the next rain, it'll just wash that shit. Next for solar panels, yeah. And I mean, this shit's fucking five hundred dollars an ounce, and yeah. just just clip them for all they're worth. If that's how we're gonna do this, then I want might it on the. Action. Might as well get in on it. Yeah, I don't. Know, it, it baffles me the stupidity of it. Like, I just saw a video today. Deer released the you know the the new four track because it's not a quad track, and you know those are high enough horsepower if they don't fall underneath the normal. Right. guidelines so that's how they get by with no def and when they announced they had no def you know the the farmers cheered and this that and the other and i'm sure they did but i'm like how long is it going to take before they close that loophole well, yeah, up? Like, that's that gonna last long. the next series will have it and that now every mine in the world is going to be like well thanks a lot or in the u.s can be like well thanks a lot assholes now yeah. we got to put all this stuff on our mining equipment yeah. but uh i mean have we really reached this point in farming that we need 800 horse tractors I mean, seriously, have we really reached this point that, the, that we actually need 800 horses? Horsepower is like sex, Tony. I've never had too much. <laughs> I mean, uh, this is getting out of control. I, 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 I like the horsepower. I'm, I'm cool with that because I do get a chuckle out. Like Big Bud had 1,000 horse back in the 80s, True. and then we revert back to 400 for whatever reason, and now we're back up knocking on the door again, you know, finally, again. Yeah, yeah I, I know what you're saying. We probably don't, but... As stuff gets bigger, et cetera, et cetera. But to your point earlier, like you're not you're not running an auger with eight hundred horse. No, you know you're pulling heavy tillage with that. Honestly, I think their main purpose for it's big ass air seeders in the mountains, isn't it? It could be because I know that does take a shitload. Of, I mean, I, I, when you're climbing hills with eighty foot of air. I seater. was talking to Montana Doug the other day, and he was telling me about his one tractor and it's on triples, et cetera, et cetera. And he was telling me he's got a race cart up the hill. Because the hill's so steep, like, he can't go up it. Yeah. So he's got to go around it and then plant down it, go around it, plant down it, go around it, plant down it, which is a little bit mind-boggling for my feeble, flat, central Illinois mind. Be like, uh, that seems like a big hill. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, we think we've got some hills here, and they really don't qualify. In yeah, the and he hill. told me, and don't quote me on this, but I thought, did he tell me that was... 700 feet and a quarter mile rise. Something it's like something, it, it's, atrocious. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's astronomical. Yeah, by our standards. Yeah. You know, we're yep. like seven feet. Holy shit. Yep. <laughs> you know, we we're just yep. talking about your shed earlier tonight, and you had to haul four foot of fill into the corner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and we're, holy cow, that's a lot of dirt. And that, you know, that's every six inches for them, yeah. you know, on, yep. a, on a field like that. Yeah, and it might not have been 700 and a quarter. I know that's, but I know, I know it's it, damn it's a steep. Bunch. It's a bunch. Because yeah. he's even told me that they have trouble climbing it with combines, just yeah. going up it. I mean, just yeah. physically crawling up it. Yeah. Which... Like I said, it's hard for us to grasp in our flatlander little minds, but yeah, but I, I don't know. This it's just it's out of control on the whole, the whole gamut. I'm just I don't I don't understand how a company can say, okay, we'll swipe the carbon credits over here to not make much tillage equipment, but we're gonna unveil our new 800 horse tractor. Yeah, because they're just playing the game. They are just playing the game. Take it over here, pass it out over there, collect in the middle. Yeah. Which I well, suppose is the way America's we've, always we've talked in the past, though. Are we really better off once Case IH made a combine bigger than a 2166? No. I maintain that if, if companies would have stayed with all class sixes, the world would be a better place. 
There would have been a backside market for them. They've been producing more models every year. Every day I'm seeing a new article that this guy took it up the ass on his X9 that he, you know, yeah. getting up to. That one I seen, it, it, providing this was true, it was $1,000 a separator hours when he lost on that fuck because they sold it at auction, and that's yeah. just what it brought. Buddy of mine tried to trade his in. That's what they wanted was $1,000 a separator hour. Jesus. Yeah, which makes pretty expensive harvesting, you know. But, like, what's the backside market for that? Where else, you know, if you drop one of those off at your place tomorrow, what are you going to do with it? Exactly. And but, the guys that are buying them up front, they don't want to use one. I'm buying yeah, a new one. Absolutely. You know, you can't, you know, if you drop one off here, well, you, you don't have enough trucks, wagons, et cetera. Your grain bins won't keep up. The elevator can't keep up. You don't have enough guys to drive the trucks. If you had the trucks, yeah. like, a, a, you know, your auger's got to get bigger. It, it, there's a lot of things that work into the, to the uh, logistics of, of a big-ass combine. And, and I mean, I get why they're doing it, but by the same token, they we went down this path how many times? You know, you always hear about, well, we shipped all these 9,500s to Mexico, or we melted them down, or we did this, we decommissioned them somehow or another. Like, they're going to do the same thing again. I, just, I seen here two weeks ago, maybe three, in less than 24 hours on Tractor House, there was 4,780 combines put on there. So there was like yeah. 1,400 one day. By the next morning, there was 1,800. Yes. So in one day, there was 400 780s put on there. Yeah. One day. Yeah. And how many guys do we know that are farming with stuff three or four generations older than that? Agreed. And they're not looking for a 780 tomorrow. So where are those things going? You know, maybe nowhere. It, it would boggle the mind to know the amount of equipment that sits on dealers' lots that never sees the field. Oh, for sure. In, in, a, in a growing season. Yeah. Because it's a lot. I mean, we see it here locally every year. Yeah. Every know. dealer here will have... One, two, three combines that never leave the lot, sometimes more. Yeah. Or let's say they do, but then their trade-in doesn't see the field, you know, until the next, the following trickle-down season. Like, so that's an entire, something that used to be big, astronomical at some levels, that never touches crop. Yep. You know, you see it every year. I mean, it's going to continue to happen, but. And could somebody please. If you work for John Deere and are listening to this podcast, could you please tell somebody, why are we now screwing up the combine numbers? <laughs> it, it didn't get much simpler before. I had a 760, 770, 780, no, no, no. I mean, what are we doing? This is getting as bad as seed corn now. Yeah. Stop. We don't need 400 digits in series and classes. I don't care if you call them 1, 2, 3, and 4. This, this is stupid. I can't tell you the number of times I've tried to talk guys through the case IH numbering system that, that was I still don't get it. Was a cluster for a while. And they finally streamlined it. And now we're to the AF eleven. I'm gonna assume they're gonna do an eight, nine, ten. I would hope. And make it pretty nice. But in the meantime, Deer's like, you know what? People know too much about our shit. That's too easy to do. Let's throw some letters in here and a number, but the number doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. The number has nothing to do with the class size, et cetera. We're going to bring it on the back side, and we'll have another number for that. Holy shit. Like, did you ever go into the Ford dealer and be like, yeah, I got an F-150, 760, 420, 326? Yeah. Yep. No. No, nope. you've got an F-150, out, you got, an F-250, and an F-350. When you go outside, it's a Ford Fiat. Yeah, it's a car. It has nothing. <laughs> the numbers had nothing to do with what you're driving. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nope, but that's where we're at on tractors these days. Like, we're out of letters and numbers to throw at this shit. Like the new deer tractors, you know, this is a 9RX. Yeah. No, it ain't. It's a fucking 9630 with tracks on it. I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah. but it is. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. yeah. But we just, we got to complicate it. When we were kids, seed corn. 3394 Pioneer, 3377. Yeah. Now it's fucking half the alphabet, a whole yeah. bunch of numbers. Yeah. yeah. I just. It's supposed to tell you something about it, but it probably really doesn't. And then come to find out, come spring. Oh, by the way. We can't get that for you anyway. Yeah. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to take a substitute. Yeah. Well, you and I both for taking my order in October while I was still in the combine. I had to let you know what I wanted, prepay for it, only to find out that you don't have the shit anyway. How about you figure out what you got and then let me know what you can sell? Yeah, me? yeah. Would that be handy for you in the shop there? Yeah. Just, hey, give me a big list and just go ahead and pay for it. And then, oh well, hell, I couldn't get that and that. We have to switch this around. Yeah. Next thing you know, they come out. They, I know you wanted pistons in this thing, but how about we just put sleeves in it and let the old yeah. pistons ride? Yep. You know, you got a problem with that? Are you could good with that? We'll, yeah. Well, you know, we can get you one new ring. We'll just put the other one we used, but it's it's fine. Or we'll 
we'll substitute it for a ring that's a, that's close. It's a little bit smaller. It's probably not going to touch a cylinder wall, but but you know that's what we got. But we've seen really good results in yeah, that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's just as good as the other one. It's just just a little bit older. So basically, when the guy comes to pick it up, he was expecting to pick up a ten sixty six. He's getting a Cub Cadet. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Same money though. Same yeah. money. Yeah. There's no discount on that. Yeah. yeah. You, well, you missed the early order at this point. Oh no, yeah, exactly. I mean, that was back in in August. Yeah. 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 How much longer is it before we buy our inputs a complete year in advance? Oh, it's coming. I mean, it gets, it gets earlier and earlier every year. I'm like, pretty soon I'm going to have to fertilize standing crop. We got to knock the corn down. I got to dry fertilize for next year. <laughs> get yep. it on there. Deal with it. We got to get it out there. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is getting crazy. Yeah. I'm getting to the point anymore. I'm just, I'm done with it. I'm going to post pay. Instead of prepay, fuck you. I'm doing post pay. Yeah. Seriously. I'll federal express it to you. Yeah, exactly. You put the shit on, and then I'll pay you, because I'm tired of these games, Yeah, and I'm done with it. I know what you mean. It is frustrating. It is frustrating. I don't know. I'm going to be like Clint Eastwood by the time I'm 60 years old. I'm going to be so sick of all this shit. I'm just going to go live on a mountaintop somewhere that <laughs> don't have to deal with any of it. Well, please tell me it'll play. Wah, wah, yeah. Wah. Get, off, <laughs> get off my lawn. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. You know, you mentioned that movie, like, I empathize with Clint Eastwood in that movie. I like, do, too. Like, I'm like, I feel like that's me, just with different, you know, I don't have anybody from wherever they were moving in from taking mungs. I don't have any mungs taking over my area, but I do, in fact, have other people moving into my area, and I feel about the same way about it. Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm kind of looking like, I saw a stat today, like, it was by county in Illinois how many people moved out of the county. I'm like, well, can we get that number higher? Yeah. Like, I'm looking for a lot more people to get the hell out of the county because it's getting overpopulated. I don't need any more people yeah. here. And this is where I part ways with a lot of people, and I have to agree with some other people around here. When it comes to poor people, quit catering to them. Tax the fuck out of them. They're a drag yeah. on society. You want to run them clear out of your state. Yeah. You want to oh, live off and of I'm somebody not, else. I'm not talking the working poor. I'm talking these deadbeat, low-rent yeah. housing who've never had a job or never going to get a job. Tax them at 95%. Yeah. Get them clear the fuck out of your state so you don't have to support them no more. No, well, it's kind of like the migrant thing. Hey, you want to be a sanctuary city? Hot dog, we're sending them on a bus or a plane. They'll be yeah. there in a little bit. Oh, yeah. we don't want them. We can't afford it. Nope. You want to be a sanctuary city? That's where they're going. We chose not to be. You chose to yeah. be. We're taking them to your now place. Now you see what we've been dealing with for 30 years. Yeah. And you don't think it's so funny now. Yeah. Now it's not as cool. But the part that bothers me now, and I'm not saying this towards Mexican people or whatever. I'm not, I don't mean this racist, prejudice, whatever. I'm just saying that now with warm weather coming on, Chicago is going to be shipping all them downstate and we're going to get over. Absolutely. Yeah. We're, they're going to ship, they're going to screw us on that. Yep. Like, like winters, they don't want them. Winners don't want them. And we have no facilities for no. them or no dollars for them, et cetera. But I'm cool with keeping the Mexicans. Can we deport the liberals? Let's start yeah. deporting them first. Yeah. Well, in fact, we'll do like a five for one trade. Absolutely. And and they like tropical vacations anyway. So let's send them to Mexico. We'll take the Mexicans. And we'll call it an even swap. I, yeah. I think that works out better for everybody. I'm fine with it. They get what they want. Cartel ran bullshit. And we'll take, you know. Yeah, at we'll, least they're we'll willing to work. Yeah, I exactly. Mean. Yeah, and they know which bathrooms to use. Exactly. So we'll swap it out. Yep. Seemed like a good trade to me. Yeah, th- it's going to be a shit show by the time this is all said and done. Mm-hmm. And I don't blame Greg Abbott, you know, anybody no. that's shipping them up here. Hey, you guys are sanctuary cities. Here you go. What did you see that deal with the other day where Venezuela is dumping all their prisoners off? They're clearing out all, their, heard, pr- yeah. all their prisons and dumping them off at the border. Let them sneak in here so they don't have to deal with them anymore. Exactly. We don't have to feed these people. We'll send them to the U.S. Yeah. They're going to let them in. We'll send all our Would, would we not be fools prisoners. for doing the same thing if Canada had the same policy? I'd clean out every prison in America. Yeah. Dump them off. There Plus, you take go. It right here to the border. That's, yeah. you, that's the only stipulation. You're a free man, but don't come back yet. Yeah. Here you go. Here you go. And I Get bet out. you most of them would take you up on it. Yeah, I'm sure they would. Yeah. At least for a little while. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, now that the shoe's on the other foot, we get to cry foul, though. Well, hey, we can't handle all yeah. we, you know, this. This is inhumane. You're yeah. just dumping them off here. Well, you can't do that. I saw some state in the south was expanding, was trying to expand the castle law to where if they were on your property, it was just, just like they were in your house. You could drop them. Really? I'm like, well, that, you can't be doing that. They're stealing your shit and they're violating. Like, I, I don't know that that's wrong. I don't personally have a huge big issue with it i 
you got those deals in some states where now if you come home from vacation and they're in your house, you can't kick them out. Exactly. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Like, that makes no sense at all. Did you see the mayor of Peoria, or not the mayor, the police chief of Peoria, Illinois, who is fuming fucking pissed? Hmm. So here in Illinois, we got the what they call the Safety Act. And so yep. this all, then this all got tied together. So now basically in Illinois, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Yeah. You can't be arrested for it. Like, you can come to my house with a gun, and I can basically just say, hey, you need to leave. And you're like, well, I'm not leaving. So I'm like, well, okay, that's pretty much all we can do because the cops can't arrest you. can't do anything. Yeah. So... That also, we also went to cashless bail. Yeah, which is a great plan. Which means if you're a nonviolent offender or have no big record before that, that basically you can pretty much do whatever you want and they don't, you don't have to post bail. You don't have to do nothing. You just get to walk free. So here, like a week ago, there was some guy, and I think he robbed a bank or he robbed something. And when the police tried to pull him over, he jumps out of the car, starts waving a gun, going to shoot people. He goes to the cops back off. He jumps back in his car, takes off this big high-speed chase. So they finally end up catching the guy or whatever, haul him to jail. Judge is like, well, he's got no prior record. Turn him loose. And, I mean, the, the police chief is fuming pissedly. You're like, <laughs> this guy robs a bunch of shit, gets out pointing guns at my yeah. guys and this and that. It's like, hey, that's you, what you, you guys wanted. I think it was Pittsburgh, right? They basically said the cops aren't going to patrol from 10 o'clock to 6 o'clock in the morning. Really? Nobody at the, the police stations. like, you leave a message. We'll look into it later. Jeez. I think it was Pittsburgh. God. Yeah. yeah. So I got to think their tourism is going down, at least for the, uh, for the nightlife yeah. anyway. Would I would think, think so. You yeah. mark my word. This is going to fix itself. It might be five years yeah. from now. Yeah. But this problem is going to fix itself. Eventually. Yeah. Eventually it will. Yeah. I guess I look at that as these crackheads tried to break in my shed, and guess what? I had no prior record either. So. Yeah. yeah. When some boomsticks go off, yeah, don't know nothing about it. Guess I'm getting out too because I didn't have no priors. Yeah, I mean, how how are we going to cut this? I yeah, mean, well, it's so ridiculous that it's, that it's to that point. There's just no logic applied to any of it. Yeah. That's that's the frustrating part to all of it. Nope, and people just keep voting for this shit over and over and over and over again, and that's why I don't vote. And I know that's where I part ways with a lot of people, but I don't because it. Yeah. I know what you're saying there. I haven't missed an election since I turned 18, nor do I plan to. But I don't know what good it's done me. But I I feel like my ancestors died fighting for that. i got to keep doing it. But by the same token, I know what you're saying. I've missed the last. The uh, last time I voted was in Hillward, so in 20, when Trump was for re-election. But I'm firmly convinced that election was stolen. Oh, I'm yeah. firmly convinced. So why would I? why would I waste my time anymore? Yeah. No, it doesn't matter in Illinois. Anyway, we've been stealing them since the 60s. Exactly. We're good at it. Yeah. We announce who's won before the election's over. Exactly. So what's yeah. that tell you? We count really fast, Tony. Common Core math is kicking ass here. We yeah. are estimating. It is. The winner, calling it a day. You haven't lived until you have a Chicago in your state. You can <laughs> yeah. be three and a half hours from there. Yeah. And they can still run the whole show. Yeah, that ain't no shit. It's no different. Remember Mike Madigan, the longest serving Speaker yeah. of the House in U.S. history. All we had to do is get him out of there. And get things him out of there, change. things are going to change. Well, how much has changed? Nothing. I think it's actually got worse. Yeah. So what's that tell you? Yeah, no doubt. It is a shame. He did a ton of damage to this state. Yes, he did. But it didn't get any better once he left, really. If they ever put him in prison, what's he doing now? Hopefully breaking yeah, big rocks into small, but I doubt that. He's old enough, though, just to peel, peel, peel till he dies of old age. Yeah. You know, he'll he'll never see he'll never see a bit of jail time. He's got enough money and enough lawyers and just connections yeah, and papers. Hell, he's appointed most of the judges in this state at the appellate courts and all that. Yeah. You know. That's a fact. So yeah, he'll never he'll never go down and do hard time. No, unfortunately. Unfortunately, I was thinking the other day, instead of this TikTok ban, how about we band together and we say, you know what? Tell with the politicians, we're we're forcibly, and I don't mean you got to take up arms necessarily, but no, nope, we're putting in term limits and age limits. As a population, you want to ban TikTok? That's fine. We want to ban old politicians. Agreed. If you're over 65, you can't run for office. I want totally your right. ass living underneath the laws that you passed. If you're over 65, you shouldn't be able to run for office. I agree. Life expectancy in, is about 75, so you don't have to put in at least 10 years underneath the shit you passed. 
Agreed. And at that point in time, your mental capacity isn't as good as it was before anyway. And people even think you know, Like, my dad and I absolutely. talk about this all the time. He's He'll be 74 here shortly. And and we because he's all for that, too, that, you know, age limits would do just as much good as term limits. Yep. Because when you're that age, you don't think like a younger person. You know, no. you're, you're more reserved than, well, man, I wouldn't do that. Well, I'm sure you wouldn't because you're 74. Yeah. I can take more of a risk at 44. Yeah. Absolutely. So you, you just don't think the no. same. And honestly, you're like, well, I'm probably not going to be around yeah. in 25 more years anyway, necessarily. So uh, Agreed. Yeah, well, we'll just keep, I kind of like this power deal. I'll just keep sitting at this desk and keep wheeling this and wheeling that. And, and the flip side of that is, is there's other things that my dad will do because he'll be like, I hell, if it kills me, I've had a good life. You know yeah. what I mean? And stuff. I'm like, well, yep. I'm not going to do that. I mean, yeah. so... So it goes both ways, but you just think differently when there's that much of an age gap. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why I think we should just say, you know what? You ban TikTok, that's fine. We're banning politicians. Yeah, we're banning you. We're banning you. We're banning anybody over 65 from running for for office. You're done. You've been in office four terms, six terms, eight terms. Pick your number. You're done. I don't care if you've been the president of the freaking sanitation board. You turn six Uh, terms, you're out. Yep. You're done. School boards, all that, all the way. You're done. We're moving on. I'm talking from grassroots all the way to yep. the top. You're done. Yeah, it's over. Bullshit. And it is hard to. You, you got to learn. You got to be in there for a little bit to learn some of the backstory on shit. Not even necessarily the way things go or how things are done, quote unquote, but the backstory on certain things. Like, you know, I you could bring a tractor into me and be like, "Hey, Nick, this is has this oil leak." I want it fixed. And I can be like, well, the reason it has this oil leak is because you did this, this, and this with it, and that's what caused it to leak. I could just fix the leak, but then I send you back out, and you do these same three things, and it starts leaking again. So there is some value in I get it. the experience, but you got people that have been in there for a lifetime. That's not how it was designed. That's not how it was set up. And the bad part now is is all we're doing is you got the old power players that are just grooming the new power players mm-hmm. and teaching them. The bullshit ways, so it never changes. No. Ab- you wouldn't have hired AOC no. to be the head bartender, because that was her career. She was a bartender. You wouldn't have hired her to be the head bartender yeah. prior to her getting in Congress. But she's played the game long enough now. She'll probably be, 30 years from now, she'll probably still be yeah, in office. She'll be a lifer. She'll be your next Nancy Pelosi, Diane yeah. Weinstein, whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. No doubt, which is just sickening. But here we are. I just can't believe, I cannot believe people just line but, up. But it's got so shitty this. anymore. Like, nobody, nobody, nobody super good. honest or good is going to run for it, right? Yeah. Like, why would they? I don't blame them. I don't want to be on any local. I mean, you know my policy. I don't go to meetings. Agreed. I don't either. You want shit done? Let me know when and where. I'll show up and help you do it. You want me to go to a meeting? I'm probably not going to make it. I'd rather scoop rock as go to a meeting. I would, too. So nope, nobody know, can you nobody know, can get along. You let me know where the rock needs scooped, I'll be there. Or I should say get along. Nobody can make a decision. That's what I can't. Well, it's not even that necessarily. It's the backdoor shit. It's the, well, you know, we really got to do this because, well, yeah, Bob did that 23 That's and a half, half years yep. ago. Or, well, we can't step on this toes. Or we owe a favor to this. Or or we there, there's always a backstory. There's always some bullshit with some of that. I just don't have the time for it. I'm the same way. Or we agree to do this, but in the meantime, I'm going to talk to Tony, and I'm going to I'm going to get him on this deal, and, and we'll just end running around. We'll just bring it up again in a different way at the next meeting. We'll get it through so it plays in our favor. I don't have the time for that shit. I don't either. I got enough problems in my own life. I don't need to look for other ones. But if you want some volunteer shit work done, happy to do it. Out of I'm, the not, few, I'm not going to the meeting. Out of the few boards, committees, all the stuff that I've been on, and it's been very few, I've never been on one yet that they open the books and they're like, damn, you know, we got 50 grand here. We're doing pretty good. Let's just kind of keep rolling, doing what we're doing, save some money back. Nope. As soon as they get any money, what? We need a new lawnmower. We need a new this. We need a new that. And so we always keep the balance at fucking zero. And then when something catastrophic happens, well, what are we going to do? And then they make stupid, rash decisions yep. because they have no money. And I don't I don't roll that way. My experience is where, with meetings is where stupid people are allowed to speak and nobody stands up and says, that's a terrible fucking idea. We're not doing Agreed. it. That's dumb. We're not doing it because you don't want to offend them because, well, they've been on here for 30 years. Well, maybe they've been doing it wrong for 30 years. If they've been doing it right for 30 years, we wouldn't be in this position. But nobody can say, that's dumb. We're not doing that. 
because you don't want to offend anybody, and I get that, fine, whatever. But I just don't participate in it I don't I, either. because I can't. I don't have that kind of restraint. Like I'm yep. to the point. Like the world is very, and I'm not. The world is black and white it is. at some level. Like there's a right decision and a wrong decision. There's a small area of gray where we can appease everybody, kind of, sort of. But compromise is where things get done half ass. I'm looking for it to be done right. I'm old school math. There is a correct answer for this equation, and there's lots of wrong answers for it. But I'm looking for the correct one. Mm-hmm. But that's not how the game is played at a meeting. And I don't care if it's a meeting for if we decide if we're putting a blue tablecloth on this table with the entire family or if we're putting a black one on it or if we're having the entire town come to to whatever to decide how we're running the sewer lines. And I just don't have the patience for it. I don't either. I'll gladly give you money. I'm not sitting on your committees. I'm not doing none of that. Lions Club wants 20 bucks for whatever. You want want the work done? I'm happy to help with some work. Whatever. You guys have decided how you want it done. That's fine. But I'm not going to the meeting unless you grant me control over the the fact that when you stand up and say, well, we don't really want to put a tablecloth on this. What we want to do is sell some carbon credits so that our tablecloth can be made out of biodegradable plastic that won't protect the table from any water or heat. And then we'll have to buy a new table next year with after we raise the taxes. See, I don't have the I don't have the time or the patience Mm -hmm. for that shit. Uh, That's just no, I don't either. I just I can't done. I can't do it and I won't do it. No, and I'm not going to do it. No, I'm glad some people do it. It's just not my cup of tea. So that's where I'm at on that. Bottom line is, you want some shit moved? Let me know. I might help you. If you want me to go to a meeting? Probably not going to make it. Yeah. No, that's exactly right. Yep. One of the last meetings I was at, I made a motion. It passed unanimously. And that was on a small, that was in a in a group meeting, we'll call it. And then it went to the, that was in a committee meeting. And then it went to the larger meeting. Passed unanimously, mind you. Never even got brought up at the big meeting. And that's why I'm done. Yep. Never even got mentioned that way. I'm like, I'm done. I'm not going again. I'm out. I wouldn't either. There's no point. Argue to you, blue in the face. Not going. Don't have the time. I see it a hundred times, too. Just from the from the outsider looking in, a lot of these committees, oh, we got to get these young people involved. We've got to get these young people. And so they get all these young people in there to do all the work. Yes. They want young people, as long as the young people do it exactly the way they want it done, Without them having to do the work. Exactly. If you guys will just do it the way we want it, without actually making any of the decisions, we'll make the decisions for you kind of on the back side. We want you to be a part of our team, but don't yeah. just shut up and just do what yeah, we tell you. just do what we tell you, do the work for us, and then we'll take the credit for it, and everything will go great. Well, yeah, I'm not interested in that either. I'm not either. No. In fact, I'm the type, I don't want any credit for any of it. I'm just going to go do it, and I don't need to yeah. be world-renowned all over town that, oh, look, I put a new set of bleachers <laughs> in the ballpark. Who gives a shit? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. But, yeah. well, we've pretty much went around the world on that deal. Well, we have. This has been a long podcast. Hope, hope to tell you guys are happy. Yeah. That's all we hear. You need more podcasts. Yeah. Well, goddamn it, we're trying to cram three or four into one here. No doubt. I got, I damn near got death threats on my TikTok Live last night. So, guys were wanting the podcast bad. So, I'm like, well, I'll, I'll get over to Tony's. We'll knock one out for you. So, Oh, yeah, I guess it's been uh, damn near a month here. Yeah, it's been a while. So, we'll try to. I know we say this every time, but we'll, we'll try to be better. <laughs> well, we say that, but yeah, we, you know we won't. Yeah, well, we got other stuff coming up. We might be a little better. Yeah. We'll, far, well, farming we're, not, time. we're not wasting any time going to meetings, so maybe we can get these podcasts Exactly. Done. Farming time's coming up, so, you know, we're going to have to put this on the back burner again. That's and true, but we've got to get a bunch knocked out so people have something to listen to during farming. That's true, too. So yeah. We'll have, to, we'll have to make it a priority. Yeah, so anyway, the takeaway from this is don't go green, don't get in politics, don't join committees, don't do any of yeah. that stupid shit. Just do your own thing and yeah. tell everybody to fuck off. Be a Christian, live the good life. And uh, stick to yourself and and wave at your neighbor. Yeah. Well, some of your neighbors. Yeah. You have to wave at all. Most, most of them. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. We'll probably see you again sometime in the next six months. Yeah. We'll be back eventually. Allegedly. Yeah. Possibly. 